Good afternoon. Broadcasting to you from Perth, West Australia. This is Perth Pete. This afternoon, I'm just going to talk about me. Because I haven't talked a lot about me and what I'm doing and what I do at the moment. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you may have picked up a lot of things about me, but I haven't really provided you with information about what I'm doing at the moment and where I'm from. So, um, if you've watched my previous videos, you'd know that I'm 41, that I'm single, that I live alone. But how did I get to be here and what was I doing previously? Well, I was born and bred in the country in a town called Northam, which is about 100 kilometres east of Perth. And I lived there until I was 17 and a half, at which point I came down to Perth to complete a university degree. And I studied for my Bachelor of Business Accounting and completed that degree when I was ooh, 21. I took a little while to do my degree because um, at the age of 18 and a half I got involved in the Student Guild politics there and was involved in that for a couple of years and then I think I probably spent a little bit too much time involved with the Guild and in the third year of my degree I failed a couple of units and um, withdrew from one so I had to repeat those and I only did those over the next couple of years. When I finished my degree I went out and worked as an accountant but I lost three jobs in three years. I think people realised that I wasn't meant to be an accountant, and I think I realised that at the same time. For several years I worked in casual jobs, working as a market research interviewer. Yes, I was one of those people that would knock on your door, or stop you in the street, or ring you on the telephone, asking you to fill out some questions. Now I could live with myself doing that, because I worked with a company that was ethical about it, and did their job really well. And I knew that we weren't selling anything. And I didn't pressure anybody that didn't want to do a survey. There was no use doing, forcing people to do surveys. And then about 10 years ago, when the telecommunications market was freed up here in Australia, I noted that there was less work coming around. So I went out and sought full-time employment. And I eventually found that as a customer service staff member at a printing company. And I've been at that same company now for 10 years. I'm no longer employed in customer service. I'm employed in a pre-production role as a uh, printing run coordinator. And that's a position that I still hold. You know, I've been there with that company now for 10 years. So what do I do for recreation? Well, we've got sport and we've got my poor, more passive activities. As I mentioned, I was raised in the country and it was fairly typical for kids in the country areas to go and play sport. And at the age of eight, my dad took me down to the local Australian Rules Junior Football Club and I started playing sport, playing football. And I played football up until I was 16, at which point I would have had to step up to play against grown men, adults. So I chose not to do that. And that was also the year that I was studying for my tertiary entrance examinations. The American equivalent would probably be your SATs, and I think the English equivalent is your O-levels. But these are the exams that you needed to pass to get into university. When I came down to university, I didn't know if I'd have much time to play sport, so I didn't play anything in my first year. In the second year, I was invited as the Sports Council Convener on the Guild to attend a rowing boat christening. And I went along and the sport looked interesting, so that's what I did. I rowed. And I rowed for about six or seven years until working life 
and a change in location, a change in suburbs here in Perth got in the way. I couldn't quite hack getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning and travelling 20 kilometres to get to the rowing club and then have to come back to uh, my home and then get ready and go to work. So I gave rowing away. So I took up Rugby Union and I paid, played Rugby Union for two seasons until towards the end of my second season I dislocated my shoulder. Fortunately that was the end of the season and I didn't do anything um, for that season. It was also about this time that I lost my full-time employment. And when I went to start working casually in market research, I didn't really have the time to commit to a team sport because most of my work was during the early evening hours. So I didn't play sport for several years. And it was only when I found full-time employment 10 years ago that I thought, well, I should be playing some sport. I need to play sport. I really enjoy playing sport. So I went to play touch football, which again, if you've watched my previous videos, would know is a heavily modified, non-contact, that's the important bit, non-contact version of rugby league. You don't tackle people in touch football, all you need to do is touch them. So I played touch football for a while, and then saw that they were always short of referees, and I thought, I'd give that a go. And so of late, that's mostly what I do. I just referee. So that's sport. What do I do for passive recreation? Well, of late, I haven't been doing much apart from playing bridge. Bridge is a card game. Many people associate it with older people. Um, too difficult for, you, for me to explain it to a layman what it is. But um, yeah, I really enjoy the mental challenge of communicating with my partner to um, get the most out of our hand of cards. I say mostly that's all I do nowadays. Um, YouTube has largely taken over the rest of my recreation. Prior to discovering YouTube, I used to read a lot. I really enjoy Australian authors. Tim Winton and Peter Carey are some favourites. And I'm quite partial to some sort of offbeat crime. Uh, two authors that I enjoy are Michael Connolly and John Connolly. I'm also a fan of going to the cinema. Now, I don't go a lot nowadays. Again, <laughs> YouTube's come to dominate. But uh, in the past, I've always enjoyed going to independent and art house cinemas. And indeed, the film that I've recommended um, in my five questions video was a foreign language film which would normally show at an independent cinema. Uh, that film was called The Lives of Others. So I think that's about it. Thanks for your time. Bye.